Hello everybody, it's Max McAllister from Traction Dynamics here today. I want to talk to you uh, about my most exciting product for the indoor cycling world thus far. Uh, there's more to come, but thus far we've been working for several months on a rocker plate. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with rocker plates, uh, what you're gonna, the, the object is to more realistically simulate the action of riding your bike indoors and uh, provide greater comfort and uh, a better uh, level of engagement while you're playing Zwift or your other indoor cycling games. So <clears throat> your trainer, once it's on the floor and you put your bike on it, is fixed and rigid, just stuck hard like a, might as well be a tree trunk. The idea behind a rocker is to let your bike sway side to side to, uh, to more closely simulate the, the action you would experience while riding down the road. Now, that's really important because on indoor cycling, once you sit on a saddle and the saddle is fixed, uh, your <coughs> sit bones now rock back and forth on the saddle, creating uh, significant amounts of discomfort on your uh, lower regions. So, the idea behind a rocker is, just like when you ride down the road, your saddle can now sway gently as you pedal, alleviating a tremendous amount of the discomfort from riding indoors. So, uh, what does a rocker plate do? Here's my saddle. It lets my bike rock. And, uh, you know, when I go to climb or sprint, I can actually swing it quite a bit. Um, now, uh, there's lots of takes and uh, different ideas on how to design these. Um, I'm afraid that I'm going to be like, uh, it's going to be like Tesla and Edison here. Uh, virtually all of the designs that are on the market presently, either homemade or being produced by companies for people to purchase, uh, all have some sort of mechanism that as the bike tilts over, it builds up some form of spring pressure that then kicks the bike back up vertically. I don't think that's the right way to do a rocker plate. And ours is going to be much, much more simple. So if I had my bicycle in the real world and I tipped it over a little bit and I let go of it, it would fall over. Nothing will ever push back on it. If I tilt it over to climb, nothing will ever push it back vertically. It's not going to happen that way. So most of the trainers in the world, right, the rockers right now, are designed, the harder you lean them over, the more they build up air pressure, spring pressure, there's some inner tube, tennis balls, beach balls, all kinds of things. All of them build up pressure and all of them kick the bike back completely undamped. So now I'm a suspension guy by trade and nature, that's what Traction Dynamics does. Uh, sp uncontrolled springs are just bad things in my world. And now, but in, if you're trying to simulate reality on a bicycle, there is no spring on your bike that pushes it back up. So let's start right there and erase all of those designs because I don't think that's the way you should go about it. Uh, what I have seen is a design is kind of called a rocking horse design is what people are calling it. So if you had your good old fashioned rocking horse when you were a child that you rode on, turn that sideways, put your trainer on it, and that's, uh, and that's basically the concept for the rocker that we're going to market. Now, what are the advantages of that? One is, it's incredibly simple. There's, so it's going to be less expensive than having all kinds of wizardry and gadgets under the, underneath your trainer plate. Uh, secondarily, you don't have to tune it or figure it out. It doesn't care what you weigh. Uh, and most importantly, it cannot break, fail, pop, burst, you know, deflate, overinflate, underinflate, whatever you want to do. It doesn't do any of that. Uh, so our rocker plate, I can't sh I'm only going to be able to show you CAD renderings. I've been telling you it's coming. I promise you it's coming. We actually have raw materials been delivered to our shop in the morning. We will be cutting chips tomorrow on the first billet aluminum CNC machined rocker plate. So one of the things that's important that I found through testing various materials and such is having uh, the, the ribs on the floor be hard metal and not wood really enhances the action of the rocker. And uh, then finding the proper curve is a big deal. So you want the rocker to be lively 
um, but yet uh, once it's balanced, find its own neutral zone. So our, our rocker will uh, right itself, but only because it's perfectly balanced. So if we tip it off to one side, it's not balanced and it'll come, it'll balance itself. But the difference is I can tilt my, my rocker side to side with just the, just a fingertip, you know, as far all the way to a stop. Now I have large, large mechanical stops. The ribs have large flat areas that will stop the bike and ever prevent it from tipping over. In fact, I can, you know, I can just stand on it and it won't tip over. Uh, and then we're going to supply a nifty set of little chocks that will allow you to chalk the, the rocker when you don't want it to rock. So for instance, if you want to work on your bike, do any maintenance on it, do some adjustments, or maybe someone else in your household rides the bike and they don't like the rocker, you can just lock it out with a couple of wheel, a little chocks that we'll make that will supply with it. Uh, the billet ribs are going to be made in three pieces. Now, we could just make the ribs in one piece, but it's, they're you know, 28 inches long. It's a problem to ship them. So we've got a really neat uh, interlocking design. They're very, very crafty when you see them. Uh, so it'll break down into a box that's about this big that we can ship you ribs anywhere in the world with the hardware to uh, build, build a rocker takes a couple of minutes to assemble. Now, we're gonna sell it with a uh, uh, quarter inch aluminum plate, all anodized, it's gonna be beautiful. Two plates, the plates will be about this big, so that'll be, a box will be about this size uh, with all the parts in between the two plates sandwiched, and that's if you wanna buy the aluminum plates. We can supply you with a wooden deck if you would like, or we can supply you with a template to make your own deck of whatever uh, special wood you might choose. So you're going to be able to buy a rib kit or a whole rocker. If you say, I don't even have a tool, I don't want to, I don't even want to know, just get, sell me the thing. We're going to have that too. So uh, <clears throat> this is going to be one of the big differences that you're going to see in our rocker that you're not going to see anywhere else. Super free floating action, totally real. Uh, it, it, it's so lively and so free and uh, it really closely simulates the feel of riding a bike. So I'm going to give you some, show you, these are some CAD renderings that I, I'm going to show you uh, of our plate. Here is a look at the, uh, it's going to be called the Action Rocker Plate. Sorry, my little tripod's wobbling here. Um, so you can see the seam up the middle, the beat, those are the two plates. The rocker's uh, arms will have three pieces, but let me show you another angle. This is a rear shot of just kind of a basic looking kicker, Wahoo kicker-esque looking trainer. So that'll be see-through billet. Uh, on the rocker ribs, we're gonna supply some special ties and the ties will keep the cords suspended neatly to the trainer. There's the three-piece design, and so there's kind of an assembly drawing, uh, <clears throat> but neatly in, intertwined with it are some uh, locking zip ties that will route the cord. You can route it to the left or the right, just depending on where you want the cord to come out in your particular home, and it will keep the cord neat and be getting from ever being damaged by the, the uh, rocker in any way. And uh, so we hope it's a very super clean, neat, and uh, Santa looking kit. Uh, we'll, we're going to do them in a satin black so that they match most of the modern trainers that are for sale on the market are all pretty much black. Uh, we're going to have mounting hulks, uh, holes, hardware, everything, options available depending on what you want to do. And as we expand our product line, uh, we hope to be able to fit virtually every trainer on the market onto our rocker plate. We'll just be going on per request order basis. Uh, most rockers will require counterweight. Uh, we'll have a counterweight kit too that's already for sale on our website uh, for do-it-yourselfers. Uh, it looks super clean, no visible hardware. So uh, this is, uh, it's going to be super nice. 
Uh, it will not be outrageously expensive. It should be quite affordable because it's simple. 